talked about cold water immersion. It's become extremely popular in the last several years, but now is also falling out of favor with females because there's influential voices who say that females have a different thermoregulatory response to males and therefore should always avoid it. So let's talk yeah. about this one. There's almost no good science to say that females will respond differently to ice baths than males. We've actually got one study. We haven't published it yet, but we've got some data. There's no difference, zero difference. There's not a lot of reason why a female would have a different ice bath response to a male. Most of the data, if you really dig into it and you look into real athletes training a lot who are doing real cold water immersion properly, we definitely see an improvement in performance with ice baths. There's been some super cool, really mechanistic research looking at cell signaling and muscle protein synthesis. And yes, there has been some studies that have shown that you may decrease your muscle protein synthesis. But there's two different sides of the story here. There's an athlete who is training and competing and you are fatigued all the time and you're trying to get the most out of your performance. I would advocate for ice baths. Are you a bodybuilder and you would just want to get big muscles? I'd probably say maybe not. We need to differentiate between athletes and non-athletes. Non-athletes, if you want to do it, do it. If it helps you feel good, go for it. But if you are an athlete, then I think they are good, but there are still some caveats. Where are you in your phase of training? What's your goal? Short-term goal, use your ice bath to decrease fatigue and soreness. Long-term goal, maybe think about when you're going to do it. And periodize, like we periodize nutrition, like we periodize training, 